Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in today. Um, you've probably heard that there's a Naked Cherry palette out and I have not really talked about it a whole lot yet. I've done quite a few looks with it just on my off time here, playing around and testing it out. They've got the eyeshadow palette, the cheek palette, some lip products and eyeliners as well. And my first instinct was to review the collection, but then as I was, you know, brainstorming the things I wanted to talk about in that review, I knew I'd be mentioning similar palettes that I already had. And I rounded up like six or seven palettes and then I was like okay we'll just swatch all these out and show everybody you know how close these different shades are from different palettes. It wasn't like I had an exact shade for shade dupe of everything in here but I had some really close things and then one morning a switch flipped and said you know why don't you just pick the one that's best and then prove it like show it side by side for the cheeks the eyes and a lip color too. So that's what I'm gonna do today I'm gonna do like a half and half face. I'm gonna put Naked Cherry collection on this side and the other stuff on this side. I've already got my foundation concealer, powder, and brows done. But just to let you know to start off, I do like this palette, okay? I like the Naked Cherry, I like a good berry eye, and I think the colors in here are overall pretty well done. And I've done some looks with this that I thought were beautiful. However, I don't feel like it's a complete necessity. And I feel that way because, as I've said, I have some things that are really, really close. Since this is a color scheme I like so much, it's something I think I've, maybe even without knowing, I've sought it out a lot lot in different places. And I've got some things that I really like that look a lot like this. So I thought in this video just offering some alternatives if you don't want to spend Urban Decay money on the collection, there are some things that can get you a darn near identical look. So that's what we're doing now. And I think we're going to start off with this highlight and blush palette actually. So this was tricky. I was looking through my stash and I'm like, what do I have that actually ends up giving me a finished look like this? This is what's inside. They've got this blush that would appear to be a pretty deep blush, a reddish kind of wine color, but when you swatch it, the intensity isn't super loud. And I really noticed that too when I put a brush into it and I start to sheer it out on the cheeks. It's really a much softer blush than you might assume it to be just by looking at that color in the pan. Then we've got a highlight over here that's kind of golden, really smooth, actually a little more like a golden champagne. I wouldn't say it's a real true gold, but in comparison to the one on this side, it does kind of appear that way because the other one has like kind of an iridescent pinky shift. To me, it looks a little more obvious and makeup on the skin, so I prefer this one. Now, in looking through my collection, I actually found something that can give the similar look here, and this is from Broadway. This is Dollar General, my friends, and this is the Broadway brand, and this color right here, maybe even mixed with a little bit of the other shade in the bottom, gives me a very similar effect to the center shade in the Naked Cherry, and then, of course, we've got a beautiful highlight up here that reminds me a lot of that champagne highlight in Naked Cherry. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this Naked Cherry blush first, and as you can see, I mean, I really didn't hold back too much putting my brush into that product and I still feel like the color is not overwhelming. So it really just amounts to kind of a soft, rosy look on the cheeks. That's not really that hard to dupe with something else. I gotta pull out double brushes because I don't wanna dip the same brush into the dupe product and people will say, oh, you had the same color on the brush, you know? Now I'll go into that color highlight. And I think that's pretty and quite glowy and I'm satisfied with that look. And this palette is the one element of the collection outside of the setting spray that I think really does smell like cherries. The eyeshadow palette does not. Now from the Broadway palette, I'm going to go into this color right down here and we'll just start getting that buffed into the cheek area. And it's a matte blush just like the matte blush from Urban Decay. And to bury it up just a little more, I'll take some of that mauve shade next to it. Really not hard to get a similar look out of a different blush because blushes sheer out on the cheeks. And it's just like, okay, that was no big deal. But I've talked about loving this palette. This is not just some like, oh, wow, good job rounding that up at the dollar store. Like, no, it's actually good. I've raved on this palette. Every piece of it is beautiful. And then I'll go into the highlight here. I've got glowing cheeks on both sides. I've got rosy cheeks on both sides. Maybe I'll do just a speck more blush over here on this side. I'm gonna call that mission accomplished there on the cheeks. I know I didn't dupe that highlighter color, but I mean, it's not really even the shade that I care for so much in the trio anyway. I did not find another uh, cherry scented setting mist. So that might be the real unique thing in this whole collection. I'm gonna go ahead and spray this on. This is the Urban Decay um, Naked Cherry All Nighter Long Lasting Setting Spray. 
Tyler tried this on in the um, little unboxing that he did and he thought it definitely smelled like cherries. Spraying that on myself now, I can definitely smell it too. Um, I like it. I think that's kind of pleasant and I've always liked all nighter setting spray. I've heard a few people say it smells like cherry cough medicine, which I absolutely hate cherry cough medicine. It's much sweeter smelling to me than that. Okay, so I've already got my eye primer on and we're gonna be doing Naked Cherry Palette on this eye. And then the palette that I have that I feel is actually closest to this Naked Cherry is my Rimmel Magnifies Crimson Edition palette. And so there's a look, and this isn't the first time I've rounded up a Rimmel palette that I thought was really similar to Urban Decay because remember Naked Heat and then they had the Spice Edition. Really surprisingly great quality in that Spice palette from Rimmel. And I'm seeing it too in this one. I'm sure I'm not the first person to point this out because I think the similarities are just really obvious here. Overall, this one from Rimmel goes a little more burgundy brick red direction and this one goes a little more pinky berry among the deepest colors. But there's a lot the same and by the time you get worked into a look on your eyes, I think there are actually quite a few looks that both can achieve. First thing that I'm gonna do is get some color in the crease with this shade called Bing and it's a really pretty matte berry pink and I'm just gonna get that going in my crease here. I'm using um, one of the crease brushes from my Morphe eye set that came from Ulta. Not my usual E25, I'm gonna use that on the other eye. But I love this color and the fact that the Rimmel one has as a shade so similar to this is really kind of surprising. It's, it's somewhat of an unusual eyeshadow color. In the Rimmel palette, it'll be this shade right here. Nicely pigmented, really smooth. For a shimmery highlight under the brow, I'm gonna grab a little bit of Turn On here from the Naked Cherry, just very lightly under the brow. And the color from the Rimmel palette that would perform that way is actually a little bit lighter, but I'm not really putting either of these on very thick so I don't think you'll be able to tell much difference. On my lid, I'm gonna use some Young Love over here on the Urban Decay side, and we'll just pat that over the whole lid. I see this color as kind of a shimmery finish pinky red, and over here in our Rimmel palette, it's the second shade. The pigment of this shade blows your mind from the Rimmel palette, like it's even brighter. I actually feel like my shade from the Urban Decay palette needs a little more help, so I'm gonna take some devilish and use that to kind of bump up the color intensity a little maybe. Maybe a little bit of ambitious as well over the top, yeah. Ambitious helps it kind of match up. Make sure my crease is still kind of blended out with both. Then I'm gonna take my darkest shade over here in the Urban Decay palette, it's called Privacy. And it's a really dark matte brown, which I'm glad is in the palette because I think it kind of, kind of helps out some of these berry shades. It gives them a little contrast, although I do really like using this devilish shade, which is a matte burgundy as well. And Rimmel also has both of those options too. You can go dark matte with a berry shade or you can use the dark brown. So again, just patting this in here, outer part of the lid. And then I think I'll use my crease brush to just blend that more. Now we'll grab a new brush and the dark matte brown in the Rimmel palette is right here on the end as well. Just stab that over half the lid, pull it up into the crease a little and blend over with the crease brush. Really have no difficulty using these Rimmel eyeshadows as I go back and forth between the Urban Decay and this one. I mean, it's no, there's no problem blending. There's no weird issues. The one big difference I've noticed so far in these two looks is just the fact that that lid shade, this color here is so vibrant. And I think maybe I could take this like satin finish brown a little bit over the top and it might bring it down a notch just to make it fit in with the Urban Decay side better. It's kind of silly because I know in reality not everybody's gonna be trying to use both on each eye and make them look identical. I'm just adding a little more brown here. I feel like the, the opportunity and the ease is totally there. Now I'm just putting on a little more of this pink shade kind of around the upper part of the eye so I don't lose that nice fade we've got going on there. And same thing for this side as well. For lower lash line, I think I will use that shade Devilish here, which is the dark burgundy from Naked Cherry. Just get some of that smudge down here with a pencil brush. 
This is the kind of palette that really brings out a little bit of a greenish look in my eyes. I do really love that. I mean, these tones, I'm, I'm not trying to pick apart the Urban Decay because it's a good palette. I just think it's fascinating that there's something out there for like under 10 bucks that can basically do the same look. Over here in the Rimmel, we've got a couple of shades. One's a little more pinky and one's more of like a, a brownish burgundy. I'll go for that one here and just apply that on the lower lash line. Now the eyeliner, the black liner shade from this collection is called Black Market. To me it seems like a soft black, like lighter than the color they put out called Zero, and it seems like it almost has a little bit of a sheen to it. So I just pulled out another drugstore liner from my collection that I feel like gives the same sort of soft black vibe, and it's from CoverGirl and it's called Perfect Blend in Basic Black. And I think once these go on the eyes you're not going to really be able to see any true difference between them. Also in the Black Cherry collection, and they have a color called Love Drug, which I could not find a dupe for in my collection, but it's very pretty. If you're into a liner that's not too deep and it's kind of a mix of berry and purple, this is very pretty. It also has a pretty sheen to it, and I really like that shade. I'm not always wearing a ton of pencil liners, so I don't know that I personally would see that as a must-have, but as far as liners go, I think it's beautiful. I'm gonna take um, the Black Market color, though, and just use that to line my upper lash line. Nothing crazy here, just a little thin line close to the lashes. And then we'll go with the CoverGirl. And trust me, I'm not like really patting myself on the back for this, like, oh, I found a black liner to match this other black liner. I just figured since it was part of the collection, I'd find a drugstore one to use on this eye. We are lined, my friends. I would like to do some light liner in both lower inner rims. Wet and Wild will do just fine there for both. And then guys, I'm gonna do mascara top and bottom. I think I may put on some lashes today just cause I'm feeling like it. And then we'll talk about my lip dupe. I'm back and my eyes are all done. I've got NARS Climax Mascara on the upper lashes, CoverGirl Clump Crusher Water Resistant on the lower lashes, and then my Ardell Wispies on both sides. And now we're gonna talk about these lipsticks. There are three in this collection, beautifully packaged I might add here with the cherry on the tube. They've got one like full on traditional lipstick called Cherry, which is is labeled as a cream lipstick and it's very very deep and dark and then there are two metalized lipsticks and these have a real shimmery finish to them and to me I would wear these probably not on their own but more in conjunction with another lipstick and the shade I'm duping today is actually the cherry color to me it just seems like the most relevant most important shade here because like I said these they might look good layering up I have layered that color on top of cherry and I think it's pretty but it's not absolutely essential now I've got Got the dupe shade swatched right next to Cherry, and that is the e.l.f. matte lip color in Scarlet Night. Frankly, I prefer the fact that this is in a matte formula as opposed to a cream, because I do find this cream a bit of a struggle to put on because you want to be so precise with it, right, not get outside your lip line. But I'm going to put this on this half of my lip and the other on this half. Normally if I was doing lip color dupes, I would do one on the top lip, one on the bottom, but I'm trying to keep this half and half face thing going here. So we'll put the Urban Decay on here. And it's a really great like fall and winter color. Not knocking the shade whatsoever. I think it's beautiful. It's just not exactly one of a kind, you know? This looks so funny. Ah! Scarlet Night here from e.l.f. And by the way, if you didn't know this, I've said this a few times and blown some people's minds, but there's a little sharpener at the bottom if you want to further refine the tip of your e.l.f. matte lip color. But just go ahead and get this going here. I can apply this so much faster. The slim design of these sticks, get it on so quick, it's matte, so I'm just a lot less worried about it. But maybe I should stop talking for a second. Trying to go in from the outside so you guys don't think I'm like sweeping color over from the other part of my lip. But yeah, there we go. There's our dark vampy lip. I think it's an exact color dupe for sure. Like that's the most dead on thing in this whole video probably. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe these swatches off before I get lipstick all over my leggings. But um, yeah, there's the full look guys. I'm pretty pleased with this. I think the eye looks came together really, really similarly. If there was one difference I could really point to, it was the fact that the shade from the Rimmel that I started to go all over 
over my lid with was, I thought, a lot more full on and just immediately pigmented compared to the similar shade from uh, Urban Decay. But I just wanted to show you, you can achieve the same looking eye, you can achieve the same looking cheek here, and without a doubt, the same lip color too. So again, that's the Rimmel Magnifies Crimson Edition palette. I picked mine up from Walmart. They have some other varieties of this, including the Spice Edition, if you like something a little more orangey and neutral. This palette you can find at Dollar General. It's from Broadway Colors, and it's called the Powder Cheek Palette. And this is the one labeled Spring, and I think they have an even deeper option as well. Lip color is the Elf Matte Lip Color in Scarlet Night. And as far as eyeliner goes, this was not monumental. I mean, any black eyeliner can kind of dupe that look. But if just generally speaking, you're looking for kind of a soft black pencil, this CoverGirl Perfect Blend is quite nice. And while I do really feel that that Rimmel palette is probably the most similar thing that I have to the Urban Decay, I just thought I'd go ahead and show you some of the other berry eye palettes that I think could also have some similar looks in them. I have the Huda Beauty Mauve Obsessions palette here, and this has some kind of pinky berry shimmers and also some really rich mattes. The CoverGirl True Naked Sunsets palette has some gorgeous berry things happening in here, some really beautiful shimmers as well. This came out around the same time as their chocolate and peach palettes, and I found this one to be far superior to those. Just in quality, color intensity, absolutely love it. I have the Blushing Berries palette from Dose of Colors, and now this is an all matte palette, so this in many ways is not going to compare to the Urban Decay, but if you like a strong berry look and the ability to go very, very dark with it, and you prefer mattes, I thought I'd just throw that out there. I see a lot of similarities in this um, Revolution Rose Gold Chocolate palette. Now it's got some other things going on here with like kind of a spring green and an olive green, but when you look at some of the rich dark shades, you look at the pink here, some of these sort of burgundy and rose gold shimmers, I could totally see that same kind of look coming from Naked Cherry. Also, gosh, I love this palette. As far as the rich shades go, this Phoenix Rising from Pretty Vulgar. I did a full tutorial with this at some point over the summer. This palette is rich, rich, rich and warm. And honestly, it makes me think of a fusion of Naked Heat and Naked Cherry all together because you've got some of these sort of pumpkin-y shades, brownish colors, really rich berries, some very, very dark tones down here, including the darkest plum you've ever seen in your life. And if we like berry colored or even, you know, a little bit of pinky tone in the eye look, who could forget Modern Renaissance? I'm not calling all these things dupes. I'm just pointing out some of the things that you might might have floating around that could also give you that deep reddish berry eye. There's also a little something called the once and it has neutrals and berries and reds and dark colors to mix in with it too. I mean I've got you guys telling me every day that you're using that palette all the time, you're finding dupes in it, you're doing all these looks that are similar to other palettes and the Naked Cherry is no exception. There's a lot of Naked Cherry in that palette. So thank you my friends for taking time to hang out with me today. I hope this was informative for you. If you've got other um, dupe type products for anything in this collection, let us all know in the comments section, and I will see you very soon. Bye!